National Security Agency was started in 1952. And that, you notice, is only three years after 1984 was published. So yeah, I think this is not a coincidence. These are both you know, um, coming to us from the Cold War, from post-World War II. And when the NSA started, it started as a codes and signals operation. They had been learning to break codes, and everything that they did was highly secret. And the big joke that always gets a laugh in these circles is people say, well, you know what NSA stands for? It stands for no such agency. <laughs> so yeah, that's the line. They're not there, but yeah, in fact, they're watching everything that we do. So from 1952 on, the NSA was doing whatever they were doing in great secret. And there are historians, if you're interested in finding out more about the history of surveillance in the United States, there's a historian named James Bamford, B-A-M-F-O-R-D, who writes wonderful books about the history of the CIA and you know, the, the history of through surveillance. So I want to begin the story, because our theme here is the impact of the war on terror. I want to begin the story right after 9-11. Now, to me, you know, 1984, I thought, was just an amazing book. And when people say 1984 and Orwellian, the part of the book that they're usually thinking of is the big brother is watching you. you know, that's the, sort of the part that most people you know, bring with them, bring forward. But there are several other things that George Orwell talks about in this book, which also seem to me uncomfortably resonant of what we're experiencing today. One, if you've just been looking at the book, is you know that the world of 1984 is in a state of perpetual war. Right? There's always war. War is like the background. It's like you have the screensaver. There's always a war going on. And therefore, whatever Big Brother is doing is justified by the fact that it's time of war. Now, the whole idea that we are at war with terror is something that, a metaphor that came into being in the fall of, 19, of 2001. And the idea was that if we're at war with terror, we're justified in taking emergency steps and making exceptions to our usual principles, because after all, it's a war. Now, if you look back at American history, and there's a lot of history here too, let me, since I'm, if this is a book group, I'll give you another book. Uh, Jeffrey Stone wrote a wonderful book called Perilous Times. And that's a history of civil liberties in times of war. And he traces from you know, early days through you know, our world wars and the civil war and everything else, how during times of war, we have in fact been tempted to just cut back on the First Amendment, which is our freedom of speech, freedom of association, freedom of religion. Just cut back on the Fourth Amendment, which is our protection against unreasonable searches and seizures on the idea that if you have the emergency of wartime, you sometimes have to just give up some liberty in order to be secure. I'm sure you've all heard that phrase. A lot of people will say that. You tell them about Big Brother watching, and they say, oh, well, you know, but we have to give up some liberty in order to be secure. Now, one problem with the idea of the war on terror being a war, if you take that metaphor seriously, is if that justifies our going into a state of emergency, then when does it end? Your World War II had an end, we could sit down and sign a peace treaty, and we knew when the war began and ended. So when is terrorism over? So, you know, starting with 2001, the whole idea of this, some of the powers that were unleashed, you've heard about the USA Patriot Act. Do you know that's an acronym? Okay, catch this. Imagine USA Patriots bill there. The, the real name of the act is Uniting and Strengthening America by Providing Appropriate Tools Required to Intercept and Obstruct Terrorism. That's the name of the act. And what that act did is it's like 300 different provisions that amend previous law and change it in all sorts of ways on the idea that we were in an emergency. Now, the book that I wrote, which I thought I had a picture of, but I don't, so I'll just wave it here. It's called Taking Liberties, the War on Democracy and the Erosion of, the War on Terror and the Erosion of American Democracy. And I wrote this book, I started writing it about uh, the middle of Barack Obama's first term because it seemed to me that it's understandable that in the fall of 2001, people were in a panic. You know, there had just been this major terrorist attack. Uh, and people wanted to do something. So where did the Patriot Act come from? Well, it was powers that the Department of Justice had wanted for a long time, but couldn't sell Congress on giving them. So the idea that there was this emergency and they could get emergency powers to do all sorts of surveillance and so forth was very popular at the time. But in my view, when you get to 10 years after 2001, and then 12 years, and then 13 years after 2001, it's time to look back at the measures that we adopted in those panicky days, which were before we even really knew what had happened on 9-11. If the 9-11 Commission had not yet studied, how that occurred. So the idea that we already knew exactly what we needed to do to prevent it from happening again was, you know, that's really quite a bit 
really swagger there. <laughs> it's really hard to say. So I thought that we really had to start looking at this whole idea that people had that, um, that we have to give up some liberty in order to be safe. Well, how much liberty were we giving up? And was that really effective? What were the costs, really, and what were the benefits? And in my view, we really hadn't been doing very much of that. So I want to continue the NSA story by telling you about uh, the first uh, whistleblowers who we had about the NSA, because this is not just about Edward Snowden. This story goes back on these. So shortly after 2011, in addition to getting all these additional powers from Congress, powers to, you know, the, remember the librarians at the time, some of you will remember, were all up in arms because there's a provision in the Patriot Act that allows the government to go to anybody who keeps records on somebody else and find out, find out what was in those records. That's your schools, your hospitals, your libraries, your internet service provider, your telephone company, etc. And the Patriot Act said, well, you know, you, you, you can just get this sort of special court order, and then you can ask a librarian to tell who's been taking out that biography of Osama bin Laden, or who's been looking at the infrastructure of dams, because maybe they're planning to blow up a dam. So the librarians were very much concerned about this. So at the time, the Attorney General told them, oh, relax, you know, we have no intention of using this power in libraries, we're not going to abuse it, we use it very rarely, it's really not a problem. That I'm going to call the library provision, it's section 215 of the Patriot Act. But a lot of people started calling it the library provision because it was the librarians who first became very alarmed at the idea that if you give the government that much power to look at things, who knows how much they're going to look at. It. 